Hey everybody, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is seven o'clock on Saturday evening. So that means it's time for a Facebook video. Let me go ahead and just uh, do a quick refresh here off to the side and be sure that we're transmittalating and that I can see folks um, leaving comments when they do. All right, we're gonna make this big. There we go. Okay, hey Rosie, how are you? Glad you could make it tonight. All righty. So while people are joining up, I'm going to get a quick drink, and then we're going to get started, and we're going to see if I can do this. Hey, Glenda. Hi, Mary. Appreciate you joining from Colorado. Where in Colorado, Mary? Hi, Debbie. Hey, Daryl. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Barbara. Hey, Nancy Lynn. Beth, appreciate you joining. All right. So I have a... Hi, Connie and Faith. Appreciate you coming, Barbara and Julie. All right, so I have a sneak peek of a new stamp set coming, and this one is kind of cool. So this is like a combination of Inkspiration, you know, the uh, the true life photo look stamps that Stampin' Up! has. You can see when you stamp this, if that doesn't look like a cabin in the woods, I don't know what to say, because it really does. But what's fun about it is that this is a single stamp and it when you ink it up you get what looks like a reflection in an icy river all right so that's kind of cool we're going to make a card today i did a little playing around with some of the ways to ink this and i'm going to show them to you here in just a second and we'll talk a little bit about each one if that is okay and if you have time but let's go ahead and get started. Uh, all of these card cuts will be on the blog post tomorrow. None of them are terribly complicated. This is really m more about um, this stamp set than about any kind of a heavy duty card. Oh, thank you, Jean, I appreciate that. Tomorrow is switchover day. I've got some fun tropical ones I'm gonna try tomorrow, I think. Hey, Pam, hey, Holly. All right, so my color scheme for this one is um, Night of Navy in the matte, Misty Moonlight. I've got Night of Navy ink, a little bit of pool party down here, and then some mossy meadow. For the card we make today, I'm gonna go, everything is gonna be the same, only mossy meadow is gonna be evening evergreen because yes, I am out of this plaid and it was the one that I really wanted to use. So I need to buy another pack and I will do that, but I can't get it here, you know, between the time I realized it and now. So we're going to play with a slightly different color scheme, but I think it'll be quite nice nonetheless. So first of all, we'll just do a little matting up. I've got some Night of Navy and my Evening Evergreen. This is from the Neutrals pack and I picked the plaid. There's four designs. You can pick any of them that suit you and make you happy. This one makes me happy. What I like is even though I'm using Evening Evergreen, the card is still quite pretty. I, I mean, I think. Now, I have taken a piece of Misty Moonlight and embossed it in the Bark 3D uh, embossing folder, which is in the annual catalog, which means it's available right now. And I'm just gonna mat it on its piece of Night of Navy as well. Okay. Easy and also peasy. Uh, well, did you guys do anything fun today? We pretty much worked. Wayne is outside working yet. We're trying to get, he's trying to get a barn pad put together. You know, when you live on property that is sloped everywhere and you want to build buildings, you spend a lot of time moving dirt from one place to another so that you can create level spots. And that is really not, that's not easy. It takes a lot of stinking work, so. I feel bad for him, but at least he's in his air conditioned cab. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and um, adhere this to the card front. And I'm just kind of trying to make it sorta even, you know, as sorta even as I can. Now I've got a piece of the paper lattice that I've already kind of started to cut up. Oh yeah, yeah. Po Polk County Fair and moving mulch, oh my goodness. Hey Judy. All right, so what I have done is I've just taken a full sheet and I've cut it down to this size, okay? So I've really just trimmed off part of the edges and I'll go ahead and finish that up because I left the little 
pads, the little ears there, and I want them tidied up. And then I'm going to use it on the inside as well, and you'll see how that's going to work out. It's fun. I really, really, really like the paper lattice, don't you? I mean, this is kind of a fun embellishment. Okay, except now I have little chads everywhere. Now I'm just going to take some of this liquid glue and dab it in these solid squares. And I promise it will stay because we're going to put some stuff over the top and then it will be it will be well and truly adhered. Because, you know, liquid glue is the bomb, diggity. It is the bomb, diggity. And I'm just going to center it right here like so. And then I will let it, I'm going to set this aside to dry. Does that look straight? Yeah, that's pretty straight. I'll take it. I'll take that for a dollar, Alex. Okay. Now, we'll set that aside, and then we're going to do some stamping, okay? This is where you absolutely positively want your Stampopotamus or a similar um, pos stamp positioner. We'll take a little bit of basic white, make sure I got a big enough piece, and I'm going to hold it down with some magnetos. Hopefully that'll be out of the way. Yes, okay. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things. I did several iterations of this, and the, at first I went with my markers, okay? And they were okay. So, okay, this one is the very first one I did, and this was just misty moonlight, the whole the whole thing, which is good. I like it. But to me, it, it needed to be a little lighter color here. So then I tried um, misty moonlight, and then I used a little bit of... Um, I think on this one I did the Misty Moonlight and I stamped it off and then I inked the top and stamped it again. I inked the top with my marking pen. Still didn't really like it. Okay. Then I went and I did, um, I used markers again and I used the Knight of Navy on the top and Balmy Blue on the bottom. And my response was kind of, meh, it's okay, it's all right. Then I did one and this one right here, this is where I screwed up. So if you guys want to use the marker technique, which I think is fine and it will absolutely work. What I'm going to say, hi Julie, what I'm going to say is when you ink your stamp, go this way. I'm going to show you what happens. You remember when you were a kid, they had those, you know, the, the coloring books where there was nothing on the page and then you took your crayon and you scribbled like that and the image appeared, right? Well, this is the same way. Watch what happens when you color this. Can you see what's happening? Can you see the image showing up? Okay. And this actually works pretty good. It'll make a night, it'll make a perfectly good image. You may have to do it twice. You want to remember to, you know, blow on your image first. Here's what I don't want you to do. Okay. Um, hang on. First, I got to get that lid I just dropped. Okay. Sorry. What I decided to do, because I thought, well, I'll make sure I can get rid of any horizontal lines by going this way. And I, it just didn't work. If you can see what happened here. It totally muddied up that image. That You can see the trees down here, but you, hopefully it will come back. I'm just going to keep talking, all right? Hopefully we'll get it back. It looks like we're back. So if you use the marker technique, go across horizontally. Don't don't go like this. You're going to muddy the waters, as it were, or the forest. You're going to muddy the forest. All right? So, but what I ended up doing is using an ink pad. Let me clean that off so I don't do something stupid. Oh, and I wanted to show you one other little experiment that I just did a minute ago. I thought, well, maybe this could be a spring or a summer setting. So I used, I'm so glad I came back. I had my do not disturb on, but apparently my phone saw fit to go ahead and disturb when my phone rang. So here I used shaded spruce on the top and um, old olive on the bottom, because that's really what color a pond would be in the summer. And I didn't love it because to me, this is obviously snow and this is obviously more of a frozen pond than a summer reflection. So you can make your own decision, but for me, this is going to be a winter scene 
always. Okay, so there you have it. That is my story, and I am sticking to it. The green is pretty, Julie. It is. It's just, it didn't, it didn't work in my brain. So, so that's what I did. All right, so let me show you how I inked this one. I started with my Knight of Navy ink pad, and I'm, I'm just going to ink the top half of this image. And if you get it down on the bottom half a little bit, that's okay, because that becomes kind of a shoreline transition, and it, it works out really pretty well. Okay, so we're just going to ink that up like that, and then stamp. Okay, and that is a very, um, I'm almost just ready to take that image right there. I may give it, I'm going to give it one more little bit on the top, just to get a little more definition. Thank you, Stamparatus. Okay, there we go. Now, close the Night of Navy before we have a catastrophe. Thank you, Judy. I think so, too. I mean, there there's some places that it's kind of chipping, but that was, I mean, it's nail polish, so it's going to do it. It's been a week, so I think a week of solid manicure, I'm happy. I'm very happy. So I'll be changing that out tomorrow. Okay, and now I'm going to take my pool party, and I'm going to ink the bottom half. And again, if it kind of overlaps here in the center, that is perfectly fine because that is just going to be shoreline. Okay. And then we'll just bring it across and give it a stamp. There we go. And there you have a perfectly beautiful, I mean, I think, I, I could be wrong. It's possible that I am wrong. I've been wrong before. I happen to be wrong a lot, actually. But I think that is a pretty nice reflection in an icy pond of a pretty cabin in the woods. What do you guys think? Yes? No? Maybe so? It would be very nice in sepia or browns. Absolutely. You could just go completely tone on tone. Lots to be done here. Okay, so here's the next place you need to make a decision if you're going to make this card. Okay, now let's see. Where did I put him? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Okay, now on my sample, I tore the edges, and I like that really quite well. But then I thought, I wonder what it would look like if I fussy cut it just following the kind of um, curved edge. So that's what you get, all right? And you can absolutely do that, and I think it would be very pretty. I'm going to tear it again because I like that, but this is just another way to use this stamped image and kind of change the look. It looks, it, looks, it looks a little more formal to me. I'm gonna keep it kind of relaxed here. My tip when you are um, tearing is once you decide which way you're tearing, tear that way all around your image, okay? I tend to tear towards myself because I don't know why, but that's what I do. And so I tear with my right hand and hold with my left hand. And then you can kind of guide it and just get that same distance all the way around the image. If you change the direction, so instead of pulling towards me, if I were to change this way, it puts the tear on the back instead of on the front, and then it doesn't look like the same person tore all the way around. Okay, so that's just, that's a little tip if you're tearing. And it's pretty easy, take your time. Does it matter if it's perfect all the way around? Of course not. First off, it's car a card. It's art, it's paper, you're, it's a creative endeavor, not a scientific theorem that you're attempting to prove here. Okay. In other words, it ain't rocket science. You want it to be pretty. And I really like how the teared edge, teared? Did I just say teared? I totally just said teared. I can't believe it. All of a sudden I channeled my four-year-old self. <laughs> I really like how the torn edge looks. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I hope my mother does not hear this. this video. She'll be like, Mare, what the heck? Okay, so there we have our focal point image. And now we'll just start putting our card together. How about that? Easy and peasy. I've already got this done. So now I'm just going to pop this up on some dimensionals. Because I can. Because I love them. Why wouldn't I use them? And that just made me feel like I needed to sing right then. But we all knew which one. That's good. I'm, I'm real glad. Cause, yeah. That was terrible. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hmm. 
Y'all yeah, be checking my retired stuff. It's gone pretty quick today. I spent a good portion of the day packing stuff up. So um, if you see something you like, I, I discounted all of the annual catalog stuff. So time for it to go down the road. As my husband would say, go down the road. That's way in speak. Go down the road. All right, we're going to put him over here a little bit, a little bit off center, like so. Now, I already stamped a sentiment. I used Breathe Deep. Um, on my sample, I used Mossy Meadow to match my back card, my uh, card front. And on this one, I used Evening Evergreen for the same reason. Okay. I thought that you were just being merry when you said teared. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> well, I know, and that's the thing is I could have been, but <laughs> no. I'm also never going to say irregardless on purpose either, so, you know, that's just me. Okay, so I've just got a piece of Knight of Navy to mat up here. And I'm going to take a little bit of Crumb Cake Baker's Twine from the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack and make a double length simple bow. You guys getting tired of seeing these bows, huh? I'm sure it's like, Mare, you put that on every single freaking card that you do. I can't help it. I like them, okay? I like them. Don't hate me because I like a good bow. I do like a good bow. <laughs> Bernie, I just pulled your retired goodies, so they'll go out on Monday. I appreciate it. Okay. Now, I'll just kind of lay this out and see where I want it. And I kind of want this coming off of the edge. What I really don't want is for it to line up with the edge. That doesn't work. So either be centered or get it off of the edge. And I'm going to go off the edge. I don't like it lined up end to end. That just looks, that looks a little too matchy matchy for me. Okay. Yeah. Facebook is being a booger. Mm -hmm. I, but you know, really is there, is that, I mean, duh, Facebook is always being a booger. Okay. So we're going to go right there. I'll just grab me a. That one was on purpose. Uh, grab a glue dot with my twizzers and adhere the bow to the little artwork. Now here's a tip. I'm going to use double stacked dimensionals and I'm going to put them on the card front, not on the, on the sentiment. Okay, because that way I can really be sure I'm avoiding my bow take the lid off of the first set and then put the second dimensional on top. This is what I mean when I write in my blog that I use a double stack. And the reason I'm doing that is so that this sentiment will clear the knot in the bow. Because it's, it's a little bit thick right there. And you don't want it to be weird looking. <laughs> Nobody wants a weird looking card front, right? No, all right. So we'll just set this here like so. that's straight I'm gonna hold it like this yep and I think I'll put another one another double stack right there if you need another double stack you can just pull the sticker off of the first one stick them together pull the sticker off the second one and then slide it right under like that perfect oops but you should make it straight you should for sure make it straight when you put it back down there we go okay and I've got a few holiday rhinestones, and I'm going to use a couple of Knight of Navy, and I'm going to put them up here in the forest. And then I'll put a medium-sized one down here in the pond, like so. And there is the card front, done and done and done and done. Okay, now I'm going to make a little embellishment for the inside of my card. I know it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a flyover set, but don't miss it, it's fun. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I wanna use this piece right here on the inside of my card, okay? But I have to go this way because my brain will only see it that way. So you're just gonna snip off these, this edge, like so. This is pretty easy fussy cutting.
and then we'll go back and trim the little ears and this will make a nice little decoration on the inside of the card and it occurs to me just now that I totally did not get an envelope out so yay me I'm all over this today all right and just trim the little ears nobody likes excess ears or hanging chads you can call it what you will I'm of a generation where hanging chad means something if you're way younger than me pox on you <laughs> no <laughs> if you're way younger than me a hanging chad is a thing like when you punch a hole in a ballot there you go okay so I have cleared my little ears and I'm gonna take a piece of, of basic white the lattice is called paper lattice it's called paper lattice and it is in the new annual catalog which I guess is just not all that new anymore. It's like the middle-aged annual catalog. And they're really fun. I like them a lot. They're not as cool as my gold hoops were, but they're pretty darn cool. Now I'm gonna remember that I'm doing a landscape card. <laughs> Cause you know, I've never ever made an inside of a card that was portrait to put in my landscape card. Never ever. Never have I ever said no crafter ever. That was too many evers. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the little eagle and I'm gonna stamp him in Knight of Navy. Down in the corner. I like him down there. And then I'll take in uh, Evening Evergreen. Hey, Shirley, how are you doing, kid? Did you have your thing doohickey yet? You don't need the answer on here if you don't want to. Just say, yes, I did, or no, I didn't would be awesome. We've got folks on the team who are asking after you. And then I'm going to take this. This, uh, this is a sentiment, the word I could not come up with. And I'm going to stamp it in Evening Evergreen. Remember my tip? If you're using a cling stamp for the first time, always try to do it on a piece of scrap paper so that you can see how straight you are because the straightness is what? Dependent on how straight they engraved it onto the rubber and how good a job you did putting your sticker on. Okay, so it looks like it's pretty good. I'll take it. Let me encourage on someone else. <laughs> All right, and then we'll give that a good stamp without rocking, because I saw that I was quite messy with my inking. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now, that's just a little bit different. Look what I did on the sample. On the sample, I put the eagle up by the sentiment. So, two different ways to do the inside with all the same exact elements, all right? So you can choose. Let me grab my um, envelope, just one second. I thought I, I was certain I had one out, but apparently I do not. And we'll make sure it's a white one. Let's make sure it's a white one. And I'm going to put my eagle on here. Wouldn't it? Yes, it would be a wonderful, it's certainly a wonderful masculine card for sure. Okay, and there's the eagle on the front of my envelope. And then I'm gonna put some of the Evening Evergreen on the envelope flap, and then we'll just put everything together and we'll be ready to go. I know, the eagle, oh, you had an injured eagle that you took care of, how cool. I bet that was awesome. Right up until you had to let him, did he get to leave? Um, that would have been, that would have made me happy and sad all at the same time. I'm, I would be a hard rescue person because I might never ever be able to get rid of anything. That's pretty cool, Beth. I like that. I've never known anybody who had rescued an injured eagle. That's cool. When I was in college, was it in college? I went to college at Colorado State and at some point in Colorado, at in my career there, I went to the vet clinic and they had an eagle there and he had been injured and I'm he was he, that was the biggest 
bird I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he was huge. I, I mean, like, unnaturally huge. I don't know how big they are in real life. I've only ever seen them in trees, which means you can't really get a good feel for how big they are. But he was really huge. All right, so there's my envelope. We'll just put this together right quick. Oh, so he he had been in captivity long enough that he couldn't and he, um, he couldn't go back out. Well, he was in in truth he was no doubt safer in the rehab facility. Maybe not happier, but certainly safer. And I suspect he adjusted. They're pretty smart. They figure stuff out pretty good. I got a little carried away there. Carried away. Nobody's ever gotten carried away with the liquid glue, have they? No, that would be crazy. All right. I'll give that a little rub. I haven't watched Virgin River season one yet, Joan. So, so I'm going to go with no. I'm still annoyed with them because they had such a short season for, for all mankind. I got my friend in Colorado hooked on it, and she binged it, and then she's like, what? It's already over? I'm like, yep. All right, I have a Misty Moonlight card base. I played with the idea of pool party. Didn't like it, so Misty Moonlight it was. Missing half a wing from a gunshot. Aw. I'm just going to say, people suck. What, they thought he was a goose? I mean, serious. How you'd think anything that was as wonderful as an eagle was a goose. Something that should be shot. Of course, I thought the same thing when somebody shot my lab in the throat because she was close by where they were shoot shooting deer. I don't know, I guess they thought my 45-pound black lab was a 160-pound brown deer. I don't know. She got lucky. Actually, they got lucky, because I don't know who did it. I probably would have had to go to jail. All right. So we'll just add this with some dimensionales. And, oh, my goodness. I don't know. It's a toss-up. It is a toss-up. I like them both quite a bit. I really, really do. I'm a fan of Mossy Meadow. And the blues, though, I have to say. But this is really pretty. That Evening Evergreen has just enough blue in it to be to be pretty. And now I'm starting to think this was balmy blue. I think this was balmy blue, and I put it away too quick. So um, just put that in your kit bag. This is Night of Navy and Pool Party. And I feel pretty confident this is Night of Navy and balmy blue. But I, I really like the Pool Party, don't you? What do you guys think? Pool party? One on the right. I know it's really pretty. This one. Yeah. This looks more icy, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, this is a great set. I just, I mean, look at the definition of that picture. My gosh. M made out of, out of rubber. And look, when you look at the, at the actual image, you can just barely see it. You have no idea it's going to come out as beautifully as it does. So absolutely be waiting to get, get reflected in nature when you can, guys, because it is gorgeous. All right. I am going to not take up any more of your weekend. I appreciate you spending part of it with me. And I know you're excited for the new catalog. I'm hoping you're signing up for paper shares because the papers are pretty, really, really pretty. All right, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. And there you go. When in doubt, make one of each. Good plan, Julie. See you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks. Bye-bye.